Wouldn't miss it. Thanks okay. for letting me speak. Uh, I am Becky Berger, and I am a petroleum and mining geologist and work in the industry since 1977. And I read tonight through the environmental systems, environmental book that you're looking at, and I am strongly, strongly encouraging you to reject that book. Um, it depicts things like a hole in the ozone that's expanding, but they stop the um, pictures in 2007, and since 2007, which was 13 years ago, that hole has started to decrease, and they don't, it's very misleading, and a lot of children are uh, visual learners, and I think that would stick in their mind more than the actual fact. Um, there's also things in there about uh, violence and malnutrition, which probably falls under social sciences, but it doesn't fall under science in the way that science has always been looked at. Um, we have things in the science book that uh, gives absolute outcomes on environment, air, air quality, economic stabilization, necessity for taxation, and this is all based on data and studies that are either entirely false or only partially true. I don't believe that we should be guiding our children into a one set of answers when you're trying to create creative people with science that are going to go out and find those next big items that are going to help in the healthcare issues or that are going to help in the sciences. And I think you're limiting yourself. Um, the other things that I saw in there, uh, it depicts population maps overlapped with erosion problems. And it fails to point out the topography and geological structures in those same areas that are especially prone to erosion and irrelevant to population density. These examples only scratch the surface of some of the misleading, inaccurate, and um, potentially explosive type environmental issues that they are trying to claim based on emotion and a social agenda versus actual science. And I really urge you not to have environmental science in high school because chances are those children are going to take it consecutively. They're going to take biology, chemistry, and physics. You have to have those things to actually do environmental science. And I think that that should be reserved for college. Thank you. Mrs. Miller and then Mrs. Knight. Uh, this is uh, uh, very interesting and it's disturbing if these, this book has errors in it. And uh, one of our... What? No, I don't. Okay, Ms. Miller. Uh, <laughs> God, that was uh, one of our concerns, even if we can only look at 50%, mm -hmm. our books should not be, have errors in them, uh, Chairman. Uh, and if this, the way you're stating it, it certainly sounds like it. Now, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not a scientist, but what I would like to do is for you, and this is what we've done in the past, is have the publisher and challenge the publisher on these findings that you have and challenge them on the accuracy and the errors. We have done that before historically, and I would like to do that if that is possible. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. I don't know where. Uh, what's a, uh, what venue is it appropriate, Miss? Um, staff, John, would you like to answer that? But Becky, it. I love the fact that you actually read the book. Oh, no, I also went, read what the teachers are supposed to teach and how. Oh, so you went upstairs and you read. Okay, yes. I love that because a lot of our testifiers never looked at a book. That's looked sad. at the books. But I'm assuming you don't have type testimony because you were, you've been here all day? Well, I didn't even know about this hearing until okay. about uh, 11 o'clock this morning, okay. and I had to drive over. Well, what so. I'm asking is maybe you could write down the errors that you found and yeah, one of the email ones, them to the board, yeah. and that way we'd have the list. But let me let Mr. Lopez answer Ms. Miller's question first. Well, basically, Mrs. Cargo, that's correct. I would need to do a little bit of data searching, which programs, which publishers. Uh, I look at the summary sheets from the panel members to see if they already listed those errors. Mm -hmm. They're not required to correct them now, but if they were listed, they would be required to correct them at a certain time. Okay. But that's one of the things I would do, so I will get with uh, Ms. Berger okay. after this public okay. hearing and we'll get some more details ironed out. Okay. 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 I think when we just we had vote one. on the books? Okay. Don't we vote on the books this time? Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take so 
when do we, when do you talk to them about that? Well, if, if we're talking about errors, what you're yeah. voting on is whether they're going to be placed on the adopted books. Right, but um, we're I'm not going to adopt, adopt them unless those errors are fixed. Well, the errors are, that's, that's what's in question. Uh, if they're listed as errors and the publishers acknowledge it, then they will th provide us with an affidavit at a certain time. I believe it's in May that they will re they will have corrected those errors. But I don't know if they're listed anywhere. I have to look okay. at the summary All sheets. Right. Well, let's make sure okay. that these are correct. Okay. Okay. There's Thank specific you. stuff in there about hydraulic hydraulic fracking and leading it toward the children to think that it's bad for your water wells if it's nearby. And the EPA came out with a statement a year ago and once again a month ago reiterating that it has no effect. Yeah, I've read that and yet book. it's still in that book. Okay. Mrs. Thank Knight. Oh, to add in, <clears throat> you stalled my colleague. I thought she had the written testimony and I was oh. looking for it, but we don't okay. have her written testimony. Yeah, no. But we would be getting her suggestions well, of I, the factual errors. I asked her if she would email the list of errors she found and she agreed, so. Okay, yeah. Oh, is that your question? Okay. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and, and you can get um, our email address. Mr. Lopez would have the SBOE support email address. So. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, thank anything you. else? Oh, Mrs. Bohorich. Um, one of the things that, um, did you notice that it said that you, you know, there was no public place to find um, the listing of the chemicals that go into the fracking. Um, I don't know if you saw that in the in the text. In the text, the it had something which something isn't in true there. because it's on the Railroad Commission. Exactly. Uh, uh, Texas has led the way. Actually, in 2011, we had that legislation that actually started a registry, and um, the registry for that is called FrackFocus.org online. Actually, you can go in and check wells. Um, the oil companies all have banded together and they've got that on there. So, I mean, I think that's an error because it says that, you know, you can't find that information in the book unless they've corrected it well, since I read it a, a few months ago. And there's all other things in there about, like, water usage and stuff. And um, the industries realize that that's a problem. And they're Correct. they're fracking with gas now and, and gel that uses one-third the amount of water. So right. th there's a lot of things that aren't science that are in this. and. I don't think we should be addressing violence and malnutrition in a science book unless it's a, you know, you can do social science or you can do biology for malnutrition, but I don't think it's appropriate to do it in an environmental science book. And one of the other, um, the only study they actually uh, showed that I saw in the book, and maybe it has changed because I have not read if they've done any revisions um, since I looked at it a couple months ago when we were looking at this work. And um, they only had one study listed uh, regarding fracking, and it was the Pennsylvania study, which is pretty controversial, and there have been so many studies since then, you know, that, um, that show that, you know, fracking is a localized problem um, more often than anything else, and there's really, and it, there are many ways to contain it, and the, and the oil companies actually have done quite a, a bit of work on trying to make sure that there aren't any issues with uh, release of fracking so chemical. specific at this point it's like chemotherapy Absolutely. being put directly into a tumor we can do a five to ten foot bed and only frack in that section of rock because it doesn't benefit the industry to frack past that because you could lose your entire hydrocarbon reservoir yeah absolutely so. the other thing too that i noticed about the book um and i was wondering if you noticed that i i did not see and i you know i didn't read the book from cover to cover maybe you did that um, I did not see a differentiation of um, carbon. They talked about CO2 a lot, uh, a lot about carbon dioxide uh, emissions, but there was no differentiation within the fossil fuel discussion about the difference between coal, coal and, um, and natural gas. And of course, you know, we're having this natural gas explosion and, um, you know, natural gas is half the carbon dioxide emission of, of, of coal. There was also no discuss. Did you did you see any differentiation? I didn't no, see they didn't. Anything. They acted like it was all the same thing. It was all, all, the, same one sa the, all right. the same thing. Yeah, I, I had a problem. And with there's that. no particulate matter with not natural gas, and Absolutely. they didn't point that out either. It's it is the greenest thing that you can do. That and, is a fossil fuel for and sure. And electricity is a, at best, it's a secondary uh, energy source, and at worst, it's a tertiary, because you've got to burn something to make electricity. And I, I did also. Can I continue? Yeah, you have another question? question. Okay. 
Did you see, uh, and maybe I missed this again, was there a discussion about, um, you know, I, I, I remember a discussion about the personal footprint, you know, and, and of course I think that's very important that all, uh, you know, that we be aware of our personal footprint and that sort of thing, but did you see, like, any information that kind of talked about uh, emissions by the different countries and, and, of course, you've got this growing issue in China, as an example, and and adding India a gigawatt well. a week yeah. to uh, coal-fired plants. It did not plants. differentiate yeah. and, uh, in the book, and the thing is, if we cut down on all of our carbon emissions, it's not going to matter because China and uh, India are in a, a growing state, and their, their emissions are getting greater every year, just like some of the countries in South America are. It's a, it's a big issue, but let's think about this. If we have no carbon dioxide, we have no trees, no plants, no food. Yeah. I understand China's about five times the U.S. emissions right now as, as, a, as a country. And it's a global atmosphere, yeah. so eventually the Earth gets around to having us go through that <laughs> section of air, too. Right. I, I, yeah, there's it, a lot of emissions. Yeah. I think I remember there's only one environmental science book that was submitted. Yeah. Right. So unfortunately, and it's only got one, this one is what original. The teachers will have to yeah. pick if they want to buy an environmental science book. So, Mrs. Knight. Okay, could you go back and c clarify for me? Your, I thought you said that environmental science should not be taught in uh, high school. Would you elaborate on that, please? You need to have your biology, chemistry, physics to be uh, something that you already know to do environmental science because it's all wrapped up in what you've learned in those classes to be able to move on. It would be like taking calculus and you didn't take geometry. So you really need the, that solid rock basis to go on to the environmental science. Does that okay. help? But do, don't our students have to take those? Uh, this is for Monica. Uh, uh, Monica, do this, uh, don't our students take biology and chemistry before they do environmental science? Under the or current IPC. graduation requirements, that would be true. Uh, under House Bill 5, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. Well, we just so. deal with House Bill 5 now, but beforehand, that was the case that they took. Right. It, Students it, took biology, chemistry, physics, and then they got to choose their fourth science. Okay. And one of those choices was environmental, well, is environmental science. I, I thought that they had had that biology and chemistry background. I just needed to confirm okay. it. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Harding? Yeah, uh, I was wondering, uh, I didn't review the book, but d does it talk about genetically modified uh, seeds or plants? Um, not specifically that I saw, but it does talk about a lot about agriculture and not in a positive way at all. Uh, GM. Yeah. What does it say about GM? Uh, uh, Mr. Who's well, you know, there's... Uh, my favorite is that they're trying to do legislation to do away with genetically modified... And I've been told there's nothing that's not genetically modified now. Uh, Cross-pollination happens in nature. Cross-pollination is it. That's it. And that's what a modified um, seed would be. But would I wondered if they addressed it that way or if they tried to take the... Um, most of this was more about that our pollution and the, the business of being in uh, oil and gas is, is uh, causing droughts and hurting our environment. Well, considering that the oil and gas is what allows us to... Uh, purchase the textbooks, uh, it seems kind of <laughs> ironic that, that we would have a uh, textbook that would be so terribly critical of the oil and gas. Um, it's critical of mining also. Oh, and that helps purchase <laughs> our books too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but the Railroad Commission brings in over half of the uh, income to the state of Texas every year. Yeah. So, but you know that we cannot reject a book unless it is uh, uh, what is it? Defective? Factually yeah. in error. I was think, thinking ra Rowdy could tell me what the word was. Factually <laughs> in error. And you feel like that this book has enough factual errors? It has multiple. <laughs> yes, that, it does. That we would be in a position that we could reject? Yes, and it's unfortunate there's not another choice for an environmental science um, book, but as I said, I am not a big proponent of doing environmental science in high school because there's so much more science that you really need to go on to that. Well, uh, but there are a lot of kids who take the biology, 
uh, IPC chemistry and, uh, and or uh, physics, and then, you know, like two or three years of science, they have a pretty good background. It's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with the environmental science course for high school. It's just that, you know, you might have to go to popular science to get your information. It might something. be nice if it had science in it instead yeah. of social agenda. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Perez. Uh, Ms. Berger, just out of curiosity, I just wanted to know, I, I, I might have missed it, but what is your background in? I am a uh, degreed geologist. I'm a petroleum geologist, and I also worked in the mining industry for 16 years. So I've done everything from roustabout to VP of exploration, and I currently do expert testimony and acquisitions and divestitures of large blocks of property. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? All right, now with that, I think you are officially our last testifier, so thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 